So we're going to talk about using Pinterest for your business. This is video number one, the introduction to Pinterest marketing. So the first thing I want you to do is to get in the right mindset. And this is really important in order to move forward with this video training course. Once you get in the right mindset, then everything will be easier. You're going to be less frustrated and you're going to be able to zoom forward quicker. Now, as a business owner, a product owner, or, you know, whatever you're, you're owning, it's easy to want to sell. You're going to have that urge to sell. But what I'm going to say now is to quit it. Quit that urge to want to sell because this is a very, very different environment. Other marketing strategies tell you to sell directly, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a matter of this environment, Pinterest, is a very, very different ecosystem because you're about to enter a very different ecosystem. And what that means is the way you sell is very different than the way you sell in other marketing strategies. So the way you sell with Pinterest is very indirect. It's really all about the experience. Pinterest users come to Pinterest simply because they want to get away from their lives, their busy lives, their stressful lives, and they want to go to a place where they can just have fun, they can be inspired, they can laugh, they can cry, whatever emotion that they're looking to seek and get fulfillment out of Pinterest. So once you've understand that, now you understand how to sell to Pinterest users. It's all about the experience. And the question is, what can you provide that will inspire them, that will encourage them, that will make them feel better, feel happy? If you can get somebody to feel that way about how you use your product and things like that, then they're going to want to use your product. Then they're going to want to do some research and dig further but you definitely don't want to sell directly to a Pinterest user. So no self-promotion here. Now, this system is not complicated at all. It's about how to use the system effectively by creating a movement by leading others, by helping others. And the way you lead others is not by authority, but by creating a great experience, making them happy, inspiring them and so forth. So this system is about how to use it properly, but also how to use it effectively. So there's nothing really fancy. We're just going to show you how to use it properly, but with a few added twists, like contests, uh, the pin it website button, and many other different little tricks and strategies that you can use. Now let me give you a quick overview of the video series as a whole so that you understand what you're about to get into and what to expect. And I'm going to talk a little bit more in detail about each video. Video number one is of course this introduction and the whole goal of this video is to get you in the right mindset and show you how it all works. In video number two, I'm going to show you how to get Pinterest invites fast using forums, using Google, using Fiverr.com and many other websites. So we've got both free sites, free avenues and paid avenues that can get you Pinterest invites quicker. That way you don't have to wait for Pinterest to approve you on the main site. Video number three, we're going to talk about things to avoid and things you need to be aware of such as the rules and regulations that Pinterest puts on their users, the things that you should do, what you should not do. It's kind of like going to a party and having those unspoken rules and you breaking those unspoken rules and people look at you like, whoa, what, what did you just do? So you want to make sure that you avoid these things so you don't lower your reputation with other Pinterest users. Video number four, we're going to talk about knowing your market first. I'm going to show you a specific strategy in there that you can use to figure out who your audience is and figure out who they look like and how 
they do things, what do they like, what do they dislike, and things like that. Video number five, we're going to talk about keywords, hashtags, and links. Keywords are very important because you need to learn how to help people find you. And if you can figure out what kind of keywords they're searching, then you can target the right audience. Video number six, we're going to talk about setting up your Pinterest account, setting everything up so that you begin to follow people, people begin to follow you, you create some interaction, and so forth. In video number seven, we're going to talk about how to create a Pinterest board. Pinterest boards basically allow you to create a board with a bunch of videos, images, and text on a specific topic. Video number eight, we're going to talk about the pin it button. And video number nine, we're going to talk about contests and how to create a viral contest. And video number 10, we're going to talk about other powerful third party tools that you can combine with the power of Pinterest and get more traffic. Now let me explain to you how it works and the specific jargon that Pinterest operates on. A pin is basically an image or a video that gets posted by somebody. A pin board is something that contains many theme based pins. Pinning is a verb, it is the act of sharing content. Repinning is when somebody reposts somebody else's pin. And the pin it button is a little button that's added to websites for sharing content. And a pinner is you, a person who pins. Now let me explain to you two different avenues of interaction and this is important because this gives you the idea of how you can interact with people and interaction is so important with a social media site like Pinterest. So interacting and knowing how to interact with your audience is important. Number one, you can follow a board. If you follow a board, you get notified whenever that user posts to a board. So imagine if you have a lot of different specific theme based boards and somebody follows that board, then every time you post that board, it gives you the ability to communicate with the user and show them that, hey, I've posted something valuable on this board, go check it out. So in a case, it's sort of like email marketing, but you're notifying the person or sort of like Facebook when you, you're a friend of theirs, but in this case, it's a very specific board. So this really gives you really targeted traffic. You can also follow a user as well. Now, the next video, I'm going to show you how to avoid certain thing, things to do and things that you need to be aware of and things that you should do. Hi, and welcome to video number two. In this specific video, you're going to learn how to get invites fast. The purpose of this exercise is to help you get into the Pinterest ecosystem. Now, if you're aware of how Pinterest has started out and how they work, Pinterest operates on an invite only system. And that's actually how they started. They started out where they invited people and other people would invite their friends and they would invite their friends and their friends. And what happened is they created a viral desire for people to get invites from their friends. If you think back in the day when Gmail started and so forth, Gmail had invites and they still have invites, but you can actually register on the main site now. And that was many, many years ago, but that, that system created the viral desire, but at the same time can somewhat create an annoyance if you don't know a friend who has Pinterest. So that's what this video is all about. Now, obviously, if you already have an account, you can skip this video. But if you don't have a Pinterest account, then listen closely. Now, you can obviously go on the front page, and this takes several days and may not be as quick. So you can go here, you can request an invite. And number two, you can find a friend who is already a member. But if you don't know anyone, then you can go out on forums, you can go out on Fiverr, and you can go out on Google 
and find people who are willing to give you Pinterest invites if you follow them. And this could be another tactic where you could give Pinterest invites to your customers who want to follow you because whoever you invite, they will eventually follow you. So think about that. If you have a bunch of people that are not very tech savvy per se and don't really have friends who have Pinterest and they want to use Pinterest, then you could always invite them and create a following. So that's another technique that you can use. But you got to be careful. You got to avoid Pinterest phishing scams out there. There's a lot of them. In other words, there's a lot of people that will ask you to click this link to get an invite. And instead, they're going to forward you to a different page and they're going to get your information and do a bunch of identity theft. So you definitely want to avoid that and use your due diligence. Now let's talk about finding people who can really quickly give you invites. And number one, you can go to Google, look for people in forums that will give you Pinterest invites. And number two, you can go through a paid option if you want it fast. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that right now. So the first thing I want you to do is hop on over to Fiverr.com. That's F-I-V-E-R-R.com. And it's a site where you can pay people $5 to do just about anything. I use this site a lot. And what we need to do is look for Pinterest invites. And do a search on that keyword. And then after that, click on rating. So that way you rate everybody who has good ratings on the top or at the top. So it says here, I will create a Pinterest pin or promote an existing pin. No, we don't want that. We just want to have an invite. And another thing you can do is click on Express Gigs. And what Express Gigs are, you will basically receive the Pinterest invite within 24 hours. So we, we see here one person has an invite for express gigs and the whole point is this yes you're paying five dollars but you can create five accounts and with these five accounts you can invite yourself so from five accounts alone or even from one account you can invite yourself over and over again so it gives you an avenue to start out pay once and then you have a lot of accounts later down the road. And of course Fiverr does take PayPal so just create a Fiverr account pay five dollars and that's it. Now if you don't want to pay five dollars that's fine uh, but you'll need to go on to Google and look for Pinterest invite forums. So type these three keywords in here. And sometimes you'll find people like this. Anyone need a Pinterest invite? And most people will be willing to give it to you because when you accept that invite, you begin to follow that person. So you need to be aware of that. So another thing is if you want to find people that are possibly targeted in your specific audience. You could say Pinterest invite and put whatever your, your audience is or your niche is. Like for example, assuming the person who is inviting posts up on a forum need a Pinterest invite. And then in this case, this question here, we post it here and then we put the niche or specific topic that you're trying to target and then the word forum. So in this case, I'm targeting cooking forums and I'm trying to figure out if there is anybody out there who wants me to follow them. So as you can see here, some of these say, if you need an invite, shoot me an email at this place here. And this is quite recently, today is 
August 2012. This is July. And we can just click on this. And we can see it's somebody has to do with cooking. And just contact that person. Now keep in mind this can take a few days as well. But it's probably if you can find somebody who is pretty active in a forum, they're probably going to get back to you fairly quickly. But I would say Fiverr.com is the fastest route. You do pay $5, but it's not a lot. And when, once you do have those five invites, then guess what? Those five accounts can invite so many more people. And you can create more accounts that way. Hey and welcome to video number three. In this specific video, you're going to learn things to avoid and things to be aware of in terms of Pinterest. Now the purpose of this exercise is to help you start off with the right foot forward. One of the things that you want to avoid doing is to pin all of your content on one board. Pinning too many topics on one board is very annoying to users and will lower your company reputation. And this is simply because each board should be very, very specific. If it is too broad, then you will begin, you won't really attract a specific type of person. And we'll get more into trying to figure out that specific type of person and how to cater to that specific type of person in the future videos. But for now, definitely don't want to pin all the content to one board. So keep it simple. One board equals one very, very, very specific topic. In fact, the more specific the topic is, the better. You might attract less people, but you're going to attract targeted people. So quality over quantity here. So pin images and videos pertaining to that one specific topic and create more boards for different topics. So what I'd probably recommend that you do is create a list of specific topics and then if those topics can be broken down then try creating like a, a tree map. You know you've got your tree up here and it branches off into other different topics and those topics can branch off to other different topics. So if you can do that first then when you create your boards it'll actually be easier to set everything up and it'll be also be more organized as well. Another thing is not using Pinterest features. You try to use all of the Pinterest features that they give you using most of their features will allow you to really make use of just about everything that they have provided. It's easy to try to do the bare minimum. Don't do the bare minimum. Focus at one thing at a time. Once you're done, move on to the next and move on to the next. Don't think about, okay, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to do that. That kind of mindset will overwhelm you. So think one step at a time. So Pinterest offers tools like pin it button, pin it feature, which allows you to pin website content. You definitely want to use that and make sure you use the other features. So that's kind of common sense. Pinning mediocre content. While this is pretty common sense, it's a common mistake that one makes. And it's not because you're necessarily trying to provide mediocre content. A lot of times it's simply because you're excited, you can't wait to hop on to Pinterest, and you begin to just put out as much content as possible. Think quality over quantity. Because people are going to judge you by what you pin and what kind of board you create. One board is better than 10 mediocre boards, and 10 pins is better than 100 mediocre pins. Your reputation is on the line, so make sure you put out quality content. And if you can, create an account for only that one specific niche. Another thing to avoid is having too much text in your image or in your video. 
Now, obviously, the video might have words, but you just don't want to be too wordy simply because Pinterest audience, the majority of them are artsy, they're creative. So they like crafts, they like hobbies, they like to find ways or to find shortcuts or household items, cool different ways. So Pinterest is very, very visual if you've noticed. They're all about images and they're all about videos. So stick with images and videos. And within the images and videos, you might find, you know, pictures with text on it, but don't be too wordy. Don't try to jam too much text into an image. Otherwise, it's just going to overwhelm people. People are going to see it and they're just going to think, okay, I don't really need to look on that. So try to avoid that. And kind of like how I talked about briefly, quit trying to sell directly. Just like any other social media site, you cannot sell directly on Pinterest. It's all about the fun, fun experience. No one likes to be sold to, and that's a given. I'm sure you don't like to be sold to as well. But the way people sell to you on social media sites is about the experience. People get on there, for example, people get on Pinterest to learn, to have fun, to get away from their busy, stressful life, to find interesting things so that they can learn and feel inspired. So the formula is give first, capture the interest, and then sell later. If you can give first and capture interest second, you create a following of people who value your advice, they value what you put out, and the law of reciprocation is basically they will want to give back to you eventually and you can sell to them later down the road or they will do their research that where they will eventually purchase something from you. Another thing is to avoid direct self-promotion. So the same goes for images and videos that you pin. The images and videos that you pin should not be images of your product, your product, your videos about your product, promotional videos, and things like that. And try to avoid the buy this, buy that, fill in your email address type of stuff. They do not want that. Unless it's a video that's a funny, it's it can be viral video that's funny, that's inspiring, that makes them happy, makes them laugh, and so forth. If that's the type of video and your product is being indirectly promoted with these angles, then that would be okay. But just try to avoid self-promotion as much as possible. Think indirectly. We're not a salesman. We're not a car salesman either. We're not trying to say bye, 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 bye. We are selling by doing it indirectly. Another thing, just to, so that you're aware of Pinterest, did you know that if you're an affiliate for, let's say, Amazon, Pinterest actually embeds their affiliate code into your affiliate code? Now, some of you might be seeing that as commission theft or anything like that. Obviously, Pinterest owns Pinterest, so they can do anything they want. But this is not really a publicized thing. And this is something that's good to know because if you do promote something on Amazon, you might want to either use a redirect or send them to a page that eventually redirects them. So that's just something to be aware of because Pinterest partnered with a company called skimlinks.com. And they scan all the links on their site and they embed their affiliate link into it. So in other words, they get the commission, not you. So if you do promote it, use a redirect or try to capture the leads first and then promote the affiliate products. So that's just something to think about and something that you should be aware of in terms of trying to promote affiliate products and so forth on Pinterest. Here are some things that you should do. You should become a thought leader and you should try to inspire people through your boards. 
Because if you can inspire them, and I, I know I talk about this time and time again, but that's really how you sell. So you can sell indirectly by giving first, making people laugh, inspiring people, showing people how your products can be used in their daily lives without having to sell. For example, funny ways of showing your product, there's a product out there that of this blender company that blends just about anything. They'll blend computer parts, they'll blend things that you should not really blend normally. So you make people laugh, but you're not really promoting that product. You're doing it indirectly. Another way to sell is to let others brag about you. Just don't brag about yourself. And that's just a better way to promote your business. Hi, welcome to video number five. In this specific video, you're going to learn about keywords, hashtags, and links. Now, keywords and hashtags help you get higher visibility to your pins and eventually to your pin boards. Most people don't use hashtags, but when you create your pins, it's actually very easy to do, and I'll show you in just a minute. First of all, I want to start out by talking about keywords and how it can be beneficial for you. Keywords allow you to get more exposure by getting in front of pinners in a specific market who are looking for you. In other words, these pinners are going to Pinterest, they're going to the search bar, they're looking for specific pictures and a specific keyword. So if you can apply your keywords to specific images, you can get more targeted eyeballs onto your pins. And it also will get ranked into the search engines. When you post a brand new pin, make sure that you use relevant titles or relevant keyword titles and informative keywords focused inside of the descriptions. So in other words, you need to know what kind of keywords you want to rank on beforehand. And you can use the Google keyword tool for free to do that. Uh, however, in this case, I'm going to assume that you've already have those keywords. You, you know what to target. And w with what we showed you earlier on how to find the de demographics and so forth, you should have some keywords in hand. So use the keywords wisely in your descriptions. Another thing that you can use is whenever you repin other people's images, you can actually change or add the description with relevant keywords. Now, if you repin, you'll notice that most Images don't have a description, or if they do, it could be improved. So this gives you the chance to improve it and make it even more targeted. Now, when we create a board in the future videos, I'm going to actually show you how to take this one step further. Remember, when you upload your own unique or interesting pins with searchable keyword titles, and descriptions and tags, you're going to get a lot more targeted traffic. Now let's talk about hashtags and how you can use hashtags correctly. This symbol is used to mark keywords or topics and doing this will help people find you easier and is more searchable to most search engines. So as you can see the hashtag is just a number sign. You put a number sign and then you put the keyword. So, for example, if you included the hashtag number sign cupcake recipes in your description, people can click on the hashtag and what's going to happen is the number sign cupcake is going to be highlighted as a link. And whenever somebody clicks on that, they are going to get pictures that relate to cupcakes and this helps Pinterest find all of the pins related to that particular search term. Let me give you a live example something that I, I went ahead went to Pinterest and repinned somebody's item here the yummy 
number sign lemonade number sign cupcake recipe and I went ahead and repinned this onto a board that I created for recipes for cupcakes and because I used targeted hashtags within an hour the results came back I received an email that said seven people repinned your pin yummy hashtag lemonade hashtag cupcake recipe and one person liked it and that was an hour later I didn't do anything except for pin somebody else's repin somebody else's pin and but I used hashtags and as you can see here this person repinned it into their board of cupcakes and their favorite recipes and their food ideas onto their food boards and so forth so imagine just having one image on your board and having a collection of all of your images but they are targeted and because they're targeted people are going to search for them and they're going to find you so imagine this like an hour later it was seven people and imagine if it were 24 hours or a few days later it's not like I did anything all I did was put up a pin of a picture and targeted it so as you can see it's actually very very powerful to use hashtags now this is not rocket science so remember include number sign keyword in all of your pin descriptions even the ones that you repin now let's talk about links you can't really add a link to pins unless you pin a image that's on a content piece or website or use you use the pin it button which we'll talk about later on uh, but in terms of links only in your Pinterest profile description can you add a link to your website or to your Facebook page or your Twitter page so if you don't have a website that's fine go create a Facebook fan page that's free or create a Twitter account but you definitely want to include links because depending on the market that you're targeting if I'm targeting cupcake recipes then I would probably want to include a link in my Pinterest profile description about cupcake recipes as the more targeting you get the more eyeballs you get to your site then it's targeted and they, that's what they want so it's not rocket science just target everything use consistency in terms of the target market and with your keywords and of course make sure that you fulfill everything fill out everything in your profile otherwise it's gonna look incomplete and links are external connections that allow your users to find your boards and pins so make sure you use the descriptions wisely whenever you pin things and make sure that you include a link in your Pinterest profile description and use the pin it button as much as possible to pin other content from your website. Hi, and welcome to video number six. In this specific video, you're going to learn how to set up, follow, and interact with your Pinterest users. So, we're going to show you how to set it up properly from start to using it. So let's go ahead and go to Pinterest. When you first click on the Pinterest invite, you're going to be presented with this page. Pinterest first wants to know what kind of subject matters do you like. So it's going to begin to show you a list of pictures. And as you keep scrolling down, you may not see any pictures that you like. So it's going to scroll down until you find five pictures that you like so basically go through it and figure out which pictures relate to your business and to your company once you do that simply click on continue 
Now you're going to have two choices. You can either connect with your Facebook account or with your Twitter account. Now keep in mind if you sign up with your Facebook account, then it's actually going to show up on your personal profile. So unless you want it to show up on your personal profile, I would not put it on the Facebook account. Now, the only option now is to simply log in with Twitter. And of course, if you don't want to connect it with your Twitter account, you can always go to Twitter and easily sign up with a brand new account. Facebook does not like you to create a brand new account, so just keep that in mind. So I'm going to go to the Twitter route. So I'm going to go ahead and enter my username and password for my Twitter account and click on Remember Me and click on Sign In. And click on Sign In again. And I want to create and created a Twitter account with my name that is related to this. So I'm going to say Cooking Desserts. And I'm going to enter my email and then click on create an account. And after that, Pinterest is going to send you a confirmation email. So you're going to need to verify that email. And once you're done with that, you are done. And after that, they're going to forward you to a page. And on that page, you're going to see a bunch of videos and images. Now, Pinterest from the pictures that you chose earlier, it's going to attempt to show you what you might like. So the fact that I chose the desserts, these pictures are showing up. And this kind of gives me an idea of possibly what my audience would also look like. So you've got food, you've got a mommy cooking, you've got uh, exercise, gym, other types of food exercise equipment and so forth and so forth so from other users who picked kind of the images that I chose uh, this is what Pinterest is suggesting now a method that you will want to use when you first get started is to find people with a large following and follow them and if they follow you back then you'll definitely get more eyes to your profile. Now, before you do that, you need to make sure that you're, uh, you're posting, you're pinning, you're uh, repinning stuff, and uh, follow those people and repin their stuff. When you repin their stuff, they get credited if they are the original author. And guess what? They're, the law of reciprocation, you know, they're gonna feel like, wow, you know, you just repin my stuff, I'm going to repin and this and that. So to do that, you can go back to the top and click on popular. And you can also view things in categories. And we have, look, we're looking for cooking, uh, food and drink. And if we look under popular, We can see pictures that have gotten a lot of likes. And food and drink here. We can go search through and see uh, which pictures are getting a lot of likes and so forth. And let's say we have found a specific person. Now before we actually begin to add them, you probably want to edit your profile. So what you need to do at the top here is click on your name here and you're going to be brought to this page here and you can add your about here and obviously I'm not a female but you know this could be a pen name of mine and I, I could do have a about section here I love cooking desserts such as cookies 
let's say I'll just say I love cooking desserts and ex cooking and experimenting with desserts. If you love desserts, all right, so that kind of sounds weird, but anyways, I'm going to put that there anyways, and this website here, I can put my uh, website link to my cookbook. If I choose to do so, I can upload an image here, and you can also refresh from Twitter if your image at Twitter comes over here. And you can log in with Facebook, you can change that later, but I, I would not do that unless you want to tie your Facebook account to here. And you can hide from your Pinterest profile from the search engines. I would hide it until you have a good following and until you are uh, settled. So we'll go ahead and click Save Profile. And currently I have no boards here. I'm going to show you how to create a board in the future videos. But I'm going to hop back over to this section here under Food and Drink. And I'm going to try to find a picture that relates similar to uh, what I'm trying to sell in my cookbook. So let's say, for example, desserts. And let's say cupcakes. We got caramel apple cupcakes. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And you can see each person has like. Uh, this only has one like, so I'm going to go back to the top here. I'm going to go backtrack. And I'm going to click on cupcakes. Type in cupcakes in the search bar. And as you can see here, you've got, got 443 likes. That's a lot of likes. So we probably want to figure out who these people are and try to follow them. So let's click on this one. Uh, let's see what people are saying. We got 2,411 repins, 443 likes. Uh, so what I would normally do would be I would like it. And after I click on like, I'm going to click on follow. Now, obviously, Christina may not follow me unless, you know, she looks on my account and sees that I've got, you know, boards created and other cupcake boards created. So that's why I say set up everything first and then start liking. But you can interact, as you can see, it's very easy to interact. So I could post a comment and I'll just rinse and repeat and go back and forth. Now, as you can see here, uh, Christina Holland has posted this, this, and this, and she got 444 likes, 500 likes, and 200 likes here. So she's definitely someone that a lot of people follow, and if I can get her to follow me, and then I can provide, you know, help her out and stuff like that, then you never know. But you definitely need to create those boards and so forth before you really really interact to the fullest and begin to repin things and I'm actually going to show you how to create a board in the next video hi and welcome to video number eight we're going to be talking about the pin it button and the purpose of this exercise is to show you how to use the Pinterest pin it button on your website and the purpose of the pin it button will basically help you market your website, market your content. So if somebody finds really good content with really good pictures, they can pin it onto their Pinterest board. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. In order to access the pin it button that you can add onto your website, uh, go back to the main site and click on this here. And under the About section, you're going to see the Pin It Button link. So we're going to click that. And we used this previously. This is not what we're going to be using in this specific video. Scroll down a little bit further. And this is the specific button that we want to use. We want to use the Pin It Button 
for websites. And as you can see, it says add a pin it button to invite your readers to pin your work onto Pinterest. So it's kind of like the Facebook and Twitter button. And it allows people to take your content and put it onto Pinterest. And, and that's a great way to market your content and get your content more exposure. Now, in order to use this properly, you're going to need three different things. You're going to need the URL to the page that you want to pin. In other words, you're going to need the link to your content. And then second of all, you're going to need the link to the image of the pin. So if the content is on a, you know, one side and the image is on a different site, that's fine. You've created your own pennant button right here. And the description is important. It says descriptions are optional but recommended. The description is very important because if you put the description here and somebody pins the item, then they're automatically going to see the description in their box. So it gives them the ability to change it. However, for the most part, most people are going to keep it the same. So use the description wisely, put your keywords in there, and so forth. So let's go ahead and use an example here. I'm going to go back to Google. And let's say, for example, that I'm going to go back to using that cupcake recipe example. And one way to figure this out is if you already have a website that's, that is already up, and let's say that the carrot cupcake, that's what I want. I changed it to the Christmas cupcake. So the URL is going to be this here. So that's the URL of the content. And the URL of the image would be this. So I'm going to right click here, click on copy image URL and copy this over here. Then I'm going to put a description here. So I could put something like Christmas cupcakes. Are you looking for Christmas cupcake recipes to make for your family during Christmas? And let's say, for example, I'm good to go here. And you can change this pin count if you it's horizontal right now. If it's vertical, it looks like this. So depending on your site, you can make it no count, but I wouldn't do that. I would probably put horizontal or vertical. So choose whatever you want, and then what it's gonna do is it's gonna give you the code to add to your website. So there are two things that you need to do. You need to first add this link to your page right where you want the button to appear. So the location, and then here it says, add this to the code of your page only once directly above the body tag. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute. Now, if you're using a WordPress website or anything like that, then you can actually use a third party WordPress plugin. So if you go to WordPress, look for Pinterest, pin it and button uh, plugins, then this will actually speed the process up faster. But if you're using a static HTML website that's not WordPress based, then you're gonna need to follow these here. In this example, I'm going to use what we call a WYSIWYG tool to edit a piece of HTML code. Now, if you're using WordPress, then use the WordPress plugin. If you've got an HTML site, I'm going to show you how to edit the site. What you want to do is go to google.com and do a search for a program called Composer. And click on Downloads. And Composer is compatible with Windows, Mac, and Linux. So just go ahead and download your language. In this case, it's English. So download these links depending on your computer and go ahead and install it and I'm going to go ahead and use it. 
And what you need to do is simply open up Composer and either find the file or you're going to create a file. So we're going to, to find the file, you'll need to click on File, Open File, and find the HTML file. Now, in this case, I'm going to use this as an example. Let's say, for example, this is my HTML page. All I need to do is simply add this link to your page where you want the button to appear. So I'm going to select this, copy it, go back to Composer, and let's say, for example, that I want the pennant button at the very top. The easiest way to do that is to put some sort of code here and go to the source code and then look for it and then highlight that keyword that we created and just paste the button there. And then I'm going to go back here and the second thing is just add this code onto your page only once before the body tag. So in other words before the end of the page. So if I go down here and I scroll all the way to the bottom you're going to see this slash body tag. So that code just needs to go right before it. So we, as we did here, click on save. And if I refresh the page, there I go. Now, the reason why you don't see an image here is because it's trying to detect that specific website that I entered here. Now, because obviously this is not my website and the code is not on my website, it's not actually showing up. So if this was my website, it would show up. Now if I click on this and as you can see the description shows up right here. Now most people like I said will just select that and click on pin it. They're not going to change the description as much. So if you can utilize the description as much as, much as possible and make sure that you contain keywords that helps people find you then you can use this as an effective marketing tool. So they can click pin it. Hi, and welcome to video number 10. In this specific video, we're gonna be talking about other powerful third-party tools. So the purpose of this exercise is to help show you how to use third-party tools to give you the boost you need. Now, what I'm gonna be talking about is three different tools that we use and we've used several tools but we found these three tools work very well so what i'm going to do is show you these three tools and then i'm going to talk about it now and then after this slide i'm going to actually show you by going to the site and show you how everything works pinpop.com is a great site it calculates your pinterest influence now when you create an account for Pinterest, one of the questions is how do you know if you are making an impact? How do you know how to calculate a following? And how do you measure your statistics? And how do you know this stuff? Well, pinpuff.com allows to you to calculate your Pinterest influence. Pinreach.com takes that one step further and it helps you monitor trends and statistics. It'll log into your account and it'll give you an idea of how to grow your following. It, I like it because it tells you where you stand, how many followers you have, how many people have repinned your items, and how you can take that one notch further so that you have actual results that you can see. A lot of times with businesses, we use a platform and the platform doesn't really tell us a lot about what is happening. You know, Facebook tells you a lot of what is happening by using their insights uh, control panel, but a lot of sites don't really provide that. And the last tool is called share as image and this specific tool, there's a free version and a paid version. The free version is just as good for, uh, the needs, but you will notice that on Pinterest that a lot of people tend to pin or repin images that have text that inspire them, that make, make them laugh, you know, this and that. Now, obviously, you don't want to use too much text, but this 
does a good job in terms of you know giving the right amount of text and what it does is it highlights text anywhere on the web and easily converts it into an image or you can customize it and create your own image with text so now what I want to do is hop on over to these three websites and show you what it looks like and how to use it correctly this here is pinpuff.com and it shows you some basic Pinterest influence and what it does is it calculates you know your following and, and so forth and it gives you a specific score now if you log into the account and I've logged into my account you can actually see for yourself the activity score and the reach score now I've I just created this account so it's obviously not gonna have a higher score however as you can see here it's got a virality score and how viral and how possibly good my profile could be and of course it gives you a list of how many followers you have and you can see how many followers I have how many so I have I'm following 64 I don't have any followers right now uh, I've had a lot of repins though and that re those repins were from uh, using the pin it button and not the one that goes on the website but the one where people repin my website and so forth so I basically went to my website or or a website and put up the website onto Pinterest and eight people repinned it so that means I already got eight people to the site the website and the next thing is pinreach.com which is free and I really like this tool simply because it tells you a lot more detail you know it shows you how many pins repins likes liked followers following and so forth and so forth and it also shows you a graph of your score so this score gives me a 11 score and popular pin history and it shows you exactly what that specific pin was and that pin was the lemonade cupcake and you can see the popular boards in your account so if you have several boards then it'll tell you which board is more popular then you can have a direction and th the reason for this is really just to get a better view of what is working and what is not working so if you know what is working then you can focus higher and more onto that specific board so that's the reason for this tool the last tool that I want to talk about is called shareasimage.com now there's a free version and there's a paid version and what this tool allows you to do is basically create images with text so if I click on free version here you actually it's, it acts sort of like the the pin it button on Pinterest where you can drag this and drop this over onto your your bookmark bar up here so as you can see I've got my bookmark bar here and if I click it I can actually put some text in here you can change the background color we could and with the free version you just can create an image and click on post and as you can see you can create images how do cupcakes make you feel cupcakes imagine the sweet soft frosting melting in your mouth as you're taking to a different world now it's only six ninety nine to upgrade and you can create more images create inspirational images and add it to your Pinterest board so there are many many other tools out there but the first two I think will really help you and give you a better direction of where you need to be headed 
and we're just going to fill this in. Click on submit. And there we go. So as you can see, creating a pin it button is very easy. You just need to keep in mind the URL of the page and the URL of the image and then add this to your website and that's it.